We can use ideas of interest to work out how much we pay back when we repay a loan. Because when you take a long-term loan out, you're paying interest each year on what's still left to repay. You repay some each year, but what's left still incurs interest. So let's have a look. Let's suppose we borrow £10,000 at 8% interest and we repay 2,000 each year. So you might think after five years we've paid it off, we've paid back £10,000 but we have to pay the interest as well and that makes the calculation rather more complicated. And the way that we can see what happens is by drawing up this table called the amortised schedule. And we need four columns here. So we have the capital, this is what we actually owe, the interest, the payment, and the repayment, what we repay. So in the first year, I owe £10,000. Interest is 8%. 8% of £10,000 is 800. I pay them 2,000 pounds. But out of that 2,000, 800 of that is taken as the interest that I owe. That's their first claim, the interest. That leaves 1,200 pounds I've actually repaid. So in fact the capital at the beginning of year two I've only repaid 1,200 out of the 10,000. I still owe them 8,800. And then we go through the process again. 8% 8 of 8,800 is 704. I'm still paying 2,000 each year, that never changes. But out of that 2,000, 704 is taken as interest so what I've actually repaid is 1,296. Notice the pattern. The interest is going to go down each year because I owe less. So the amount repaid is going to go up by the same amount because the total of the two is my 2,000 pounds each year. So what's left at the beginning of the third year? I owe 8,800, eight, 8, I repaid 1,296 that leaves me with 7,504 to repay. The interest on that, 8% of that is 600 to the nearest pound. I paid back 2,000, so that means I actually repaid 1,400 of the capital. I subtract that from here and that takes me down to 6,104. 8% of that is 486. I paid them 2,000. So out of that 2,000, 1,514 was actually paying off the debt. This is obviously an ideal topic to do on a spreadsheet where all of these things can be, the columns can be very quickly arranged and then just um, calculated over however many rows it takes to get down to zero here. So how much do I owe at the beginning of the fifth year? Take this amount of repayment off that and I'm down to 4590. 8% of that, the interest on that is 368. I paid 2000, so that means I've actually repaid 1632. Subtract that from here, 2958. 8% of that is 213. I paid 2000, so that means I actually repaid 1787. So notice again, the interest we owe is going down faster and faster. The amount that we're repaying each time is going up faster and faster. If I subtract that from that, 
I'm left with 1,171. The interest on that is 94. So if I pay 2,000, I would actually have paid too much because I will have paid in 1,906 in that year and I only owed 1,171. So in practice, I would stop part way through this year. So if we see what we've actually spent in total, we've been doing this for seven years. Let's say we stop halfway through this year when we finish the repayments. So 1,000 there and six full years of 1,200. So overall, we've spent 13,000 on this 10,000 loan. The extra 3,000 was this interest that we've had to pay over the, um, over the period. And if you have longer and longer time periods, for example, a mortgage is typically 20 or 25 years, then the interest becomes a very significant part. It can even exceed the amount of capital on a 25 year loan. It depends, the details depend on the exact interest rate and the exact number of years but it's quite easy for the total interest to be more than you originally borrowed. But this is a way of showing how the amount you owe decreases, the interest decreases, but the amount that you're repaying each time goes up and it tells us when the loan can finish. We could do this if we wanted on a monthly basis and then we'd find the exact month when we finally paid off the debt. So that's an amortised schedule. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.